everybody, it's Adele and welcome to or welcome back to my channel Sofa Serenity. It's good to have you here. So this is where I talk about my love for sewing, all things dressmaking, fabric, patterns and my plans and makes for that the week ahead. Today's vlog is a little bit different though. This is a collaboration, my very very first collaboration with another vlogger um, all the way over in America, USA. I'm really, really excited to bring this to you um, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, let me know. Um, I've got a few few more in the pipeline um, with other vloggers as well. So that's really exciting. I'll let you know more as they become closer. My collaboration today is with a wonderful vlogger called Fat Mara. Um, she has a channel called T-I-M-A by F-K and it stands for Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art by F-K and she is absolutely fabulous. Please, if you don't already subscribe or watch any of her videos, go over and check her out. I'll link her um, YouTube channel in the comments below. She um, is really really engaging she's got a really infectious personality and she reached out to me when I first started on YouTube um, and just had really lovely things to say she welcomed me to um, the sewing community and has just been really really lovely and I've really enjoyed getting to know her um, we've been exchanging emails and you know chatting about our personal lives she's got two little children um, and I've got three children um, so yeah we've been chatting about that and our home life and stuff which has been really nice and obviously I love the sewing as well. Um, she does a lot of, um, buys a lot of vintage patterns, a lot of big four patterns. She does lots of customization. She makes lots of twirls. Um, she's very, very imaginative, imaginative and creative. So if you like that kind of thing, please check her out because she's quite inspiring. Um, so what are we going to collaborate on? Well, um, Fat Marta had to put that she had got her Make 9 and on her Make 9, one of her um, items is to actually, she's never sewn with an indie pattern company before. All of her sews and makes have been big four patterns or self-drafted. So that was one of her Make 9 plans and the dress that was on her Make 9 was this Sicily Slip Dress by Mason. And... Um, I really wanted to make this dress as well. So it, although it wasn't on my Make 9, um, I thought when she, when Fat Marla put out a, um, you know, a shout out saying, does anybody want to collaborate? I was like, yes, please, I want to collaborate. Um, and yeah, we decided on the Sicily Slip Dress by Mason. So it's basically one pattern, two ways. So I'm really, really excited to see what she does with hers. Um, as I'm filming this vlog, I haven't actually seen the finished product, but I'm going to insert my reaction to that at some point um, in the video. So yeah, that'll be exciting. But first of all, what I'm going to do is talk to you about, um, obviously, what my experience was with making this pattern. Um, you know, how I went about doing it and my thought process and share with you how it went really. So as you can see, this is my make in the background here. I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail in a minute. So the Sicily Sip Dress um, by Mason um, and it's Sewing Patterns by Mason is the name of the company. I hadn't actually heard of them um, before I looked into the Sicily Slip Dress. Um, they do some wonderful patterns. I've, there's another dress that I really like that she does um, that has some shearing here. I'll insert a picture. Um, I'll insert a picture here um, so you can have a look at it. So yeah, I don't think it's gonna be the only pattern that I make by Mason because I actually really enjoyed the process. So there's a couple of things that I was scared about doing on this dress. One of the things um, is that it is cut on the bias and I've never ever made anything where I've cut on the bias. It's kind of scared me um, before and I'm not sure why, just because I suppose it's a new technique. Um, and then the other thing is obviously it's best to work with kind of very floaty, slippery satins, um, viscoses, um, you know, materials, that, fabrics that are, you know, traditionally harder to work with um, than like cottons etc so obviously that that scared me a little bit as well so the cutting out process was something I was kind of scared about but I thought what the hell I just need to give it a go 
and what best way to do it as a collaboration. So the Sicily slip dress has two views. It has a view A and a view B. And I chose to make the view A. View A is the cow neck and it's got thin straps and it's midi length, which I love midi lengths. And then view B is still a cow neck, but with thicker straps and a shorter length. And obviously you will probably mix and match the lengths of the skirts um, accordingly. Um, just it's, bear with me because I am looking at my nose because I don't want to forget anything. So um, the pattern is only available by PDF. So if you are one of those people that, you know, like I am now, who likes to have a paper pattern, unfortunately, you do have to print off the PDF, but obviously you can send it off to be um, copy shopped if you prefer to have the paper pattern and not stick all the bits together. Um, the um, pattern comes in sizes, let me just have a look, sizes, um, there's A to J, sizes and a size a being the smallest starts off as a bust 33 inches a waist 25 and a hip 35 and the j goes up to a bust 54 a waist 46 and a hip 56 so sizing on this i actually fell between a b and a c so the size b is a bust 35 a waist 27 and a hip 37 my measurements are bust 34 waist 29 and a hip 37 so i actually fitted in the size b for bust and hip but for the waist i fitted into the c so i was going to grade out to the c on the waist however from watching quite a few vlogs and reading up on this because it's cut on the bias this dress my experience of what I'd seen is people saying that actually it does stretch um, so I decided to cut out the pattern piece in a size C the largest size and then I had a look at the difference between the two sizes and also I had a look at the finished garment measurements as well and from looking at that I decided that I thought I was going to be okay and actually I did make a twirl um, so I kind of felt, well, I decided I was going to make a twirl. So I did actually feel that, you know, it would be okay just to try it. And then if it didn't work for the actual dress, I could look at, um, you know, grading out. So I'm very pleased that I did that because um, it really worked out well and the twirl actually fit me. So the pattern's drafted for a B cup and for a, um, somebody of the height of five foot six. Um, so obviously if you're a bigger size, I am a B cup, so if you are a bigger than a B, so you'd have to do a full, um, you'd probably have to do a full bust adjustment. So from a fabric requirements point of view, it talks about using lightweight fabrics with beautiful drape, such as satins, so silk, viscose or polyester satins, lightweight crepes, rayon or viscose, chiffon or charmeuse. I was always going to make the twirl out of this Georgette fabric, this black Georgette fabric that I got from a D stash, but the actual dress that I wanted to make originally, the fabric that I wanted to use, was this fabric that in the end I couldn't use. So it was this beautiful fabric from... Um, satin fabric from Fabric Godmother in this green emerald with the hearts. So I'd washed it, I'd overlocked, overlocked all the edges, washed it, got it all ironed, got it all laid out. And then what I actually realized was that the hearts are directional. So when you actually placed it flat and then tilted it to do cut on the bias, it would mean that the, the hearts would be sideways on. And I just didn't think, I mean, it probably would have been okay, but it just, I thought, oh, it's not going to work. So I ended up not using this, which was a bit of a shame, but I'm glad I'm going to, I'm probably going to make the Sicily, the saltwater slip in this um, because I've got enough fabric for it and that's not cut on the bias. Um, and I really want to make that pattern to compare it to the Sicily slip dress anyway. And ultimately I needed something to use this fabric for. Um, so I was racking my brains, what could I use that is still kind of Valentine's Day-y um, and that would work with this pattern and I remembered that I got this from the So Haley Jane outlet store and it was in December's So Haley Jane box, um, classic box 
um, but I didn't get this. I had the luxury box, but I really wanted this fabric, so I purchased some from the outlet store. And I thought it was it, this lovely burgundy red colour would be perfect for Valentine's Day, and the shimmer in it was beautiful too, so perfect for a day. So that's where I went with my fabric choices. And I will use this for something else, like I said, this saltwater slip dress will be perfect in it. So I hope to get that sewn up soon. Um, the instructions are really, really informative. So it goes through obviously the fabric requirements. It tells you um, what to do before you start. It actually says that view A, which is the one I made, is easier than view B. So if you're a beginner sewist, they recommend that you start with view A before tackling view B. Um, view B has an all-in-one facing, which is challenging. Um, so so it, if you've never done it before, don't let it intimidate you, but equally, probably want to start with UA first. Um, the seam allowances on this pattern is one centimetre and um, printing and cutting the pattern. So the pattern pieces are very minimal. There's a front and a back, a back facing and then the straps. The pattern pieces, I will show you a very, very large. Um, excuse me this one. So this is the front pattern piece can't even show you because it's absolutely massive um, and this is the cowl bit here so it basically folds over and then the, the cowling drapes that way so it's very very big pattern pieces so you do actually need wide fabric for this I don't think you'd be able to do it on a on a non a non wide fabric on a on a thinner fabric um, the cutting the requirements it says yeah, I mean, it doesn't give you an option for anything less than 150 centimetres wide. So view A in the size that I made needed 180, well, two yards, just under two metres, and view B 1.9 yards. So 165 centimetres for view B and 180 centimetres for view A. The biggest size needs 2.2 metres for view A and 2.05 metres for view um, B. So even in the biggest size, it's not really a lot more than two meters. Other things that you'll need when making this is you need a loop turner. You definitely, definitely need a loop turner. The straps are really super thin, as you can see. So um, yeah, you do need a loop turner um, to do this. Um, obviously, you need normal things like sewing machine, etc. You do need a dress form or a coat hanger to hang the dress. Um, after you've made it because and I'll come to that point in a minute because it's cut on the bias it has a tendency to droop and drop and stretch so you do have to hang it for 20, at least 24 hours um, so yeah so the cutting plans obviously because it's cutting on the bias you do need to have your you can't cut on the fold and it's really really got some really good instructions about cutting on the bias it talks about there's a whole page about it there about how how to find the bias, behaviour of some bias cut fabric, um, that you have to do four pattern pieces, you can't cut on the fold, um, and that each pattern has to be on the true bias. So when deciding where to put them, position them perpendicular to each other. Um, so basically what that means is don't have one pattern piece facing that way and then one pattern piece facing that way. They need to be in the same um, direction. Um, yeah, and you know, use lots of pins. It says, um, talks about what stitching to do. So as soon as you've done done the cutting out, you need to stay stitch all the way around um, the fabric pieces, and that's all the way around the neckline, all the way down the sides, all the way down the bottom, not just the neckline. Um, and it also talks about once you before you hem your garment, you need to hang it because what basically happens is. Is that all focus? Can you see on that illustration the hem actually drops? And on my twirl, it dropped, um, did drop on in the chiffon and it did actually drop in this fabric as well. Um, so at the end you have to go across and cut it straight, which actually is the most difficult part of the, the pattern, to be honest with you. Um, so yep, yeah, so that's um cutting on the bias. Um Cutting on the bias, I actually found okay. I was, I'd built it up to this thing in my head and actually it was fine. Because there's not many pattern pieces, it's fairly straightforward. Um, I used lots of pins, um, took my time, cut out the fabric and it was fine. 
Um, the instructions on this pattern are absolutely brilliant. Really clear images, really clear instructions. Um, sometimes there's two illustrations for each one. I just, I cannot praise the instructions on this enough. Just really clear, didn't have any problems with it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Brilliant, brilliant instructions. Obviously, I only made view A. Um, view B, I'm assuming you're exactly the same. But yeah, I found this as a beginner sewist. This is something not to be scared of. It's really, really, really good. Um, and I'm very, very impressed with it. And I definitely would buy another mason pattern again. Um, so, yeah, lovely details on this. So, um, first of all, when I did my twirl, um, I don't know if anybody ever has this, their twirl went better than their actual main event. So, um, I'm actually wearing my twirl. Um, I'll insert a photograph of it because I can't do full length. But this is my twirl. So it's in this beautiful, it's in this beautiful black chiffon fabric that I got in a D stash. Excuse me, and um, got in a D stash, and the, the the cowl works really really well here on my on it, and I'm wearing it because it's quite sheer the chiffon. Um, oh sorry, it's not chiffon, it's Georgette. Sorry, it's a Georgette. Because it's quite sheer, I am wearing it with a top underneath and I've got a slip on here as well. Um, but if you wore it with tights, it'd be fine. Um, and I really like this look. I'm just going to stand this way so you can actually see it. I absolutely love this twirl in this Georgette fabric. I found the Georgette really easy to, to work with as well. Um, I actually found... The fabric easier to cut out, easier to use, and I definitely will buy Georgette again. I think it, it's really beautiful, and the and the cowl neck on this is really really lovely. So this came together really really well. Um, I was really happy with the fit. I definitely didn't need to do the bigger size. There's plenty of room in the hip there, in the waist there. I mean, considering my waist is a 29 inch waist, I've got plenty of room. So you know just be cautious of that if you're making this this pattern and you're in between sizes it does come up a bit bigger and have room and stretch so yes yeah, so that was my twirl um when i did my twirl i did it as per the pattern with the straps like this just in one um connection um but i wanted to do something a little bit different for the um actual version so as you can see i've done two straps so basically all i did was instead of attaching it like the patterning says I just did one there and one there and I extended the strap I made them twice the width so that I can have this cute little tie detail here um, on the actual version which I really liked um, there aren't any really lots of hacks for this pattern that I noticed but this is one of the ones that I saw and I thought was really really nice so that's what I did for it um, I did have plans or had thought process that it would be lovely if you put like a slit in it and maybe a ruffle. So that's something I might do again if I make this pattern again. Um, things that I really like about this pattern um, is I really, really love the finishes in it. I think the cowl neck is genius. I really didn't like cowl necks. Um, I thought they were a bit old fashioned. They reminded me of something I used to wear in the 90s. Um, but I've actually fell in love with it. I think it's lovely, especially, I mean, I would say I do like my twirl better than I do like my, I think because I can wear this more as a day outfit as well as a night outfit. That's why I like this one more, but this is very glamorous and I am gonna wear this for Valentine's Day. So yeah, this is, um, I really, really love the finish of the side seams are all finished with, I'm gonna show you. So yeah, the side seams are all finished with a lovely French seam and I really love that effect. Um, French seams is a beautiful finish and obviously it needs it because it shreds, this material does. Um, so yeah, the facing attaches at the back like this. I just say it's really beautiful on the, it's just as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. And obviously there's the hem at the bottom there. It's actually quite good to show you because the inside is black. So I'll insert some pictures of me wearing um, the twirl and I'll also put some pictures of me wearing the actual dress itself um, so you can see how, the, how it looks um, when I'm wearing it. Um... <laughs> fabric 
here is a lot fancier so it actually gives a more structured look to the cowl neck so they do look actually different which I do quite like um I'm actually going to be wearing this on um when me and my partner go out for valentine's day for a meal probably going to wear it under i'm going to probably wear a black top with it um because it's a bit cold here in the uk to be wearing it like this um but i think in the summer on holiday with a tan it will look absolutely beautiful so i'm really pleased with it um so i'm going to now um stop filming um, but when me and Fat Mada are actually going to be trans uh, exchanging f photos um, to insert into each other's vlogs. So this is a point where I will um, hand over, I might be wearing something different, hand over to um, in a couple of days time when I actually film the vlog of my reaction to her um, dress and show you her, her, her version. Um, but please will you check out her card i'll link her card here to her vlog um so you can check hers out um and watch her video and her experiences i'm really really excited to see what she does to it whether she customizes it or not it'll be exciting to see hi everybody so i've just jumped on because last night while i was sleeping fat martha sent through her images of her um, wonderful Sicily slip dress and wow it's absolutely amazing she's done it in this beautiful beautiful um, kind of leopard print or animal print um, I think it's navy and cream and it looks very very flowy the fabric not 100% sure what she's used but it's really really beautiful and she's um, used a belt to style it with and worn it under um, a kind of high neck top like I did with my twirl and it looks absolutely fantastic um, I'm going to insert some pictures for you um, Fat Marta did say that she did have some struggles with this um, making this um, around sizing and to do with some stretching out um, which I'm sure she'll be really honest about and share in her vlog which I haven't actually watched yet it's not been released but um, I really recommend you watch that so you can um, get an understanding of her experiences too because obviously we all are different shapes and sizes and the more you hear other vloggers or other sewists have made an item the more hints and tips you can get so your version can be as good as can be as good as it can be so yeah I really really love it well done Fat Marta well done on your first indie pattern so you've done amazing and I really love it in fact I actually think yours is a little bit nicer than mine but anyway, um, so yeah, I'll insert the pictures somewhere around here so you can have a look at them. Bye, everybody. Yeah, um, overall, I would really recommend this pattern. It was very, very easy to sew. Really, really, really loved it. It totally changed my mind on cowl neck dresses. If I hadn't been doing this collaboration, I'm not sure I would have chosen this pattern. Um, but I absolutely love it. And I do want to make, um, I do want to make version B. I hope you've enjoyed this vlog and I've hoped you've enjoyed the collaboration. I'm really happy that I've brought another vlogger um, to you and I hope you really enjoyed looking at the two different makes and our thought processes around this. Um, I think they're both beautiful, beautiful makes and yeah, I'm going to really enjoy wearing it. So that's all for me for now. Um, please leave some comments in the comments. If you've liked this video, please click like. And if you don't subscribe already, please consider subscribing to my channel. And um, yeah, any comments that you've got or any ideas for other collaborations or anybody watching wants to do a collaboration with me, please email me or message me and I'll definitely get back to you. So yeah, that's all from me. That's Sophie Serenity signing off and I'll see you all soon. Happy sewing.